Okay, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, happy birthday to Bank. And, uh, and it's a great honor to be here and to help, help celebrate this a bit. Um, I wanted to, uh, I took his, uh, his admonition and the organizer's admonition seriously that I should try to sort of uh, talk about what seemed inter most interesting at the moment. And some of it uh, involved um, in this uh, long title, uh, involved, um, We'll get there. I'm pushing the wrong part. I don't seem to be particularly in... in oh, I see. <laughs> it does... My goodness. I'll give you the whole talk before we start. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, uh, now, how do I make this, uh, this point without advancing? Uh, I point... Push on... I'm sorry to... This one here? Just... Just the light. All right. Thank you. Okay. Everything in Sweden is more complicated. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so um, uh, it, 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 uh, this title, as, as the chairman pointed out, is, is a long one. And, and what I wanted to really, really emphasize is the whole issue of that, that seems to have preoccupied us for longer than I realized until I started thinking about it, about how molecules move on one another, how they move on one another with a, with a fairly low activation barriers, and how they do that dur during the course of the entire um, uh, operation, both in terms of finding their, their sites where they have to interact, um, and, and in terms of then uh, having thermodynamic binding in these uh, non-specific sites to regulate the control of the thing, and then later on to also uh, uh, couple with interactions that were, were, where they involve sliding on each other uh, inside in the co course of the, of the function themselves to, um, to, f to um, uh, move through the DNA and, and uh, uh, roll roll along so that again the, the machine is a totally dynamic thing and, and works very well and the reason I started thinking about all this again is that we've been collaborating a great deal with a very good colleague named Andy Marcus who's um who's, who's uh, uh, in the chemistry department at Oregon also and, and is a wonderful spectroscopist. And with him, we're doing single molecule stuff. We're working, we're trying to actually measure some of these movements that we previously just had to infer in other ways. So um, the... Uh, the, the, the issues them, themselves are, are come around to, the, the, uh, to what's shown here, and that is that all these things are self, the, the things we work on are self-assembling, self-regulating and interacting macromolecular complexes, which drive all these processes, and they all have to somehow work within the same cell, interact with each other, uh, regulate uh, one another properly, um, uh, not interfere with one another, um, and, and uh, then there's this whole inter intra and intermolecular a signaling system outside here, which also is a self-assembling system in both in eukaryotes and, and prokaryotes and regulates how all these things interact with each other. So it's a tall order and you're asking the nature to do uh, essentially uh, uh, um, uh, assembly reactions and, and recognition reactions and stability reactions all in the presence of everything else and that's uh, asking a lot. So the question is how does that come about? Well there's molecular biologists, uh, I, I tend to use too many words in my slides so just pay attention to the ones I, I, I point to, like the, 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 the red ones are, are more important than the others. But the molecular biologists uh, uh, worry a lot about the, uh, about the whole issue of, of finding these macromolecular machines, showing that they exist, showing that they must self-assemble, and showing how they uh, uh, may coordinate within the cells by doing genetics and various things. Then physical biochemists and people of the sort that are mostly represented in this audience, have to sort of try to figure out, pick it up from there and figure out the thermodynamic kinetic structural issues that have to be considered in, in explaining these processes. And so these questions are things like, how are the proteins of the nucleic acid folded and assembled into compl functional complexes? What interactions provide recognition and stability uh, of the, of the sequence-specific DNA interactions and how and why are the concentrations of the macromolecular components uh, regulated and how does the aqueous environment play a role? So essentially this is all of, all of biology tried to be approaching from the, from the, uh, the, the molecular uh, side and, uh, and uh, so it's an ambitious uh, thing to try to put together and I'll see how far I get. Um, so the, the central facts of this are, are well known in, in part. Uh, 
First of all, they're, they're, we're dealing in all these cases with linear polymers of defined uh, monomer sequence, and, by, and they're synthesized by templating mechanisms, so they have to all sort of relate to each other. Um, the very, and this is, of course, what, what was resulted in, in uh, all the protein crystallography that's possible, and the RNA crystallography, and so on. We're dealing with cooperative folding of these chains into defined structures with stable insides and stable outsides, and that's, um, and that's uh, critical to, of course, and this has been appreciated for a long time by almost everybody. Um, the other thing about these macromolecules is that they're co-op and, and protein structures, protein nucleic acid complexes, nucleic acid structures, they're both stable and well-defined under physiological conditions because they're formed cooperatively, but the net free energies that stabilize them against unfolding of further interactions are small, and uh, this is Rufus Lumrey called this enthalpy entry compensation, two large free energies fighting with one another to end up with a small free energy change, and then small changes in the aqueous environment of the component uh, concentrations can push them over phase transition boundaries of, into various other forms. So I like to sort of say that they're all there, they're well defined, and David showed us lots of examples of some of these in the RNA world, but they're all trembling on the brink of instability, so they're very close to the edge of, of turning into something else, and of course that's what's important about making biological systems regulate and work. Uh, the major interactions that stabilize these complexes, uh, and especially in terms of non-sequence specific binding, which is a sort of a clumsy way of putting it, but uh, I, the, the more glamorous thing, of course, that was studied from the very beginning was how do proteins uh, uh, find their specific target sites to bind to? And of course, the classical example is lac repressor, which I'll use as an example in, in the talk. But but um, but the um, but how are these things driven uh, in, in general, and, and what forces are really holding this together, and, and, uh, and where does this balance all come from? So, um, uh, th th this just summarizes three things that all of you know. Um, one can think about uh, a model for a protein as a, as a, as a, a sodium dodecyl sulfate micelle, for example, with a lot of uh, uh, liquid um, um, lipid in the middle and, and charged head groups on the outside. The reaction, of course, they, they're not connected together, so the reaction is, uh, is monomer concentration dependent, the critical micelle concentration, and there's an unstructured hydrophobic interior and polar head groups around the surface. Well, this is also the case in, in many aspects in protein folding, but if it was just like this, of course, none of the crystallographers would be able to make a living because there's nothing there to look at in the middle. It's all a fluid environment. And so in protein folding, we have the same thing, that, that we, we uh, are driving the, the reaction, the, the hydrophobic reactions want to get out of um, the aqueous environment. If the folding reaction is concentration independent for a single molecule, of course, but then if, it, if you have oligomerization, it becomes uh, concentration dependent, and, um, and the interior is structured but anhydrous, and so the critical message, one of which I'll, I'll emphasize several times, is that the interior hydrogen bond donors and acceptors must match. So one way of putting this is it's not the, the proper things that are so good, it's the improper things that are so bad. And that's, uh, I think, a, a way of emphasizing this, that, that uh, at least I like to put it. And in duplex DNA, you have the same sort of thing. You have the, the, the as, as uh, Watson and Crick showed in Pauling Gut Backwards, that the uh, <laughs> that duplex DNA is largely stabilized by base-base pair stacking, which of course again reduces the surface that's exposed to the aqueous environment, so water is critical to the whole thing. Um, the backbone phosphates are charged, uh, fully exposed to solution, and, and this is the criti a critical point, largely stabilized by counter-ion condensation. And this is... Um, this can, oh, and this is just a, a, a sort of a cartoon I made a few years ago for looking at, at the, uh, that, that you can also manipulate the solvent to drive things back and forth across this. And so the, the physiology sort of sits in here somewhere in the middle between the solvent continuum of good and poor solvents. In the random coil, everybody is happy in the aqueous solution, and it's all unstructured in the solvent. And, and at the other end, everybody is unhappy, and so you get precipitates and aggregates and so forth. The, um, you can go back and forth and the surfaces are stable here, you make the environment a little less attractive and, the, and, and regions that are the most uh, 
unhappy, uh, potentially unhappy, and the solvent begin to aggregate, and so you get oligomer formation. And this is where biology sits in the middle of all this. And organic chemistry, for example, small molecules, uh, either you have all the residues preferring solvent contacts or all the residues preferring solute contacts. And so this is also a way of looking at uh, what's uh, critical about biology. But this is a point that, that's, that's not appreciated uh, as much as it should be, probably, and that is uh, the displacement of the condensed counter ions is the main driving force that stabilizes nonspecific and partially specific, uh, also the specific sequence specific protein interactions. So we have DNA sitting here from the top or looked at from the side. This is a, a cartoon I found last week in, in Wikipedia, so I don't know who to, who to credit it to, but it, uh, it's a, it, it really says the thing very well. Uh, here are all these phosphate groups, but the phosphate groups are, are um, uh, if, if there were no uh, DNA in, 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 in water, of course, is explosive. It just uh, denatures spontaneously, and the reason is that, that, the, that, that, that this uh, these counter ion atmosphere surrounds these polyelectrolytes with this um, high axial charge density, and, and so the, you have to, it essentially sucks in uh, cati uh, cations that are monovalent, bivalent, uh, until it drops below what's called the Bierum length, which is the level of, of, a, of a polyelectron that, that can be stable and structured. Uh, and this, in the case of double-stranded DNA, as Tom Record and, and uh, also originally um, uh, Jerry Manning and Fumio Osawa pointed out, is due to counter-ion condensation. 88% of the phosphate charge is neutralized by this, leaving only 12% of the charge available for dwight huckel screening and so forth. So this is what, one of the things that's very important about polyelectrolytes. And the binding of, of, the, of say, here comes a protein. It pro, it, it's coming in. With, the proteins tend to be net negatively charged, but they have a positive patch on them, which is the binding site. The binding site moves in. It displaces uh, the, the same number of charges as are, and this will be a theme that will come up again and again, the same number of charges as are, are present here on the, um, on the, uh, in the binding cluster. And then you, um, the binding is stabilized by the entropy of mixing of the displaced counter ions, because essentially here's, the, here's one particle coming in, and in the case of, say, lacquer presser, non specifically bound, 11 or 12 uh, particles are going off, so that you have an entropy of mixing contribution, and that's what uh, makes the thing work. Uh, then the question, of course, is how do proteins, uh, with all these non-specific interactions, how do proteins read base pair sequences to start with? And, um, uh, and the, uh, one of the original uh, people that pointed this out was Seaman Rosenberg and Alex Rich, um, who was just mentioned uh, in, earlier. And um, the, so he, here's the, these are from their paper. That, uh, I'll show you this, this a little more clearly in the next slide. But they're they're two they're two. Uh, uh, base pairs overlaid in each case here, and there's a whole. So the Watson Crickery is in the middle here, and then there's the wide, the the the, the, the major groove through which hydrogen bond donors and acceptors are viewed from the major groove or from the minor groove, and that's true. And and, and there of course are four different kinds of base pairs. There's A T T A G C and C G, and so. Um, this is a better picture of, of the, makes the thing clearer. The, the functional groups, essentially, for the major groove recognition by proteins are um, acceptors, donors, acceptors, um, uh, and, and the, uh, of, the, of the potential hydrogen bond interactions with the proteins, and they're in the major groove and in the minor groove, and the, um, the, the Watson-Crick base pairs, of course, are, are, are recognition hydrogen bonds are in here. Um, it's important to recognize that, that uh, recognition and stabilization, as most of you already know, are not the same thing. Properly buried hydrogen bonds, as I already said, contribute little to stability because they simply exchange with water partners on the outside for protein or DNA partners on the inside. And hydrogen bond acceptor or donor groups buried separately are very destabilizing. So this is the, the point about bad being... Uh, the, the bad things being uh, bad and the good things not doing much for you in terms of stability. Now, I want to use uh, as an example one that we, uh, uh, a, tech, uh, uh, a system that we've studied for a long time, and some of these slides are, uh, will bring 
back memories for many of you, but the LAC repressor is actually a useful model for many of these things still. Here's the LAC system, of course, that, that it's, a, uh, it's what, what we call a polycystronic uh, 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 messenger RNA. The, there's the, 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 right next to it is the I gene, which is the, which is the, the sequence for, for synthesizing <coughs> the subunits of, mon of, of LAC repressor. It exists in a tetramer normally, often turned into a dimer uh, by manipulation, so you can study certain things better, and it controls the levels at which the various parts of the <coughs> LAC system are transcribed. And, um, and here's some of the, the sequence of the RNA uh, polypeptide chain indicating some of the important regions, including the operator binding region, the inducer binding region, and I'll say a few words about that in the context of thermodynamics in a minute. Um, the thermodynamics of LAC repressor um, binding and uh, and the equilibria involved are, are shown here. And um, uh, th th these are all things that many of which we measured, and some of which other people have also measured, especially the Tom Records group. And the lack, uh, cartoon, a very old cartoon showing uh, like this looked like two feet. <coughs> the dimer binds to the DNA. The ion displacement occurs here. I'll say more about what's going on in these little arrows and squares and uh, crosses in a minute. The other two, there's another, uh, tetra, another dimer site going in and out of the board that's up on top, of course. Uh, and the binding equilibria are involved, uh, are, are here, and I'll show you where, where the inducer one comes in. And one of the important things is that the estimated fraction of repressor free under physiological conditions in the absence of inducer is actually uh, 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 about only one or two percent. And, um, and uh, that, that will be important in a minute. So here's the, one of the things, we, in order to do any, any useful biological work, we had to sort of figure out what, what kind of an environment does one want to use to, um, to, to mimic the, the uh, salt, uh, effective salt concentration inside the cell. And so this is a very old experiment from 1977, before many of you were born, probably. And, uh, and the, but what we did was we used what was called a mini-cell system that, that Adler, Howard Adler developed, which uh, turned out to be a mutant of E. coli that has this nice property of shedding little blebs of cytoplasm as it, as it divides, so you can, so it can, these, the cytoplasm contains the stuff that's free in the, in, in the, um, in, in the, in, in, the, uh, in the cytoplasm, but not, uh, of course, seeing what's bound to the DNA. And that way we could essentially collect these little blebs of cytoplasm, collect the maxi cells, figure out what, uh, how the RNA, uh, uh, how, how the repressor was distributed between the cytoplasm and the nucleoid bodies, which are the equivalents of the, of the chromosomes, essentially, of higher organisms. And by, because the dependence of this, um, of, of this binding constant, uh, uh, you know, in a system with, with this many charges being displaced, it turns out to be about 11 or 12, is very steep. So you essentially can, can, you, can say, um, uh, uh, under the circumstances when we know what, what the free and bound concentrations are, what is the equivalent ionic environment inside the, inside the DNA, inside, I'm sorry, inside the, inside the cells, that we, and, and how do we make, set up in vitro systems that model that as well as possible? Because it turns out that if you work at low salts when you should be working at higher salts, you often have interactions that you don't want to see. And if you work at very high salts, you don't get the interactions you do want to see. And so we, we concluded that, that, this, uh, that about 150 millimolar sodium or potassium and about 10 milli, millimolar magnesium are effective in, in vivo salt concentrations for in vitro experiments. And this, um, this turns out to be very useful because this, uh, it also turned out that this, uh, we, we discovered shortly thereafter that, that one could come to that conclusion too by asking how uh, high a salt concentration prevents ribosomes from working properly, and that's about the same thing. So this is not necessarily, whoops, what did I do now? Uh, what's happening? I don't, I don't think I want to update at the moment, do I? So, so how do I go back to this again? Uh, rescue me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now what did I do? I'm sorry, better come back. <laughs> I hope I'm the most incompetent speaker that's here, but... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, 
Yeah, so, we, so, we, uh, so this is the way, this, this you can use as an effective concentration. Of course, there are a lot of other ions and there's macromolecular crowding and everything else inside the cell. But, but if you want to make yourself a solution that, that behaves about like physiological conditions, then this is not a bad choice to make. Okay, so then the, the first issue uh, uh, that follows from all this is thermodynamic regulation of, of protein nucleic acid interactions. Uh, have to be looked at this way. And um, one of the things that, that we early discovered was that, um, that, uh, if, if one, that when you bind inducer to, which is, uh, as it turns out, allolactose, which is part of the LAC system, to, um, but the model system that all of us use as a, as a mechanism is IPTG, um, you lower the binding constant of the repressor to its target site, which is huge, as you see. One of the things about uh, LAC repressor is that it binds non-specifically about nine orders of magnitude more weakly than specifically, and that, that, that's a, a, a important in various aspects, although there are many other proteins where those differences are much smaller. And, but but, the, but the, you only reduce the, constant, the, the binding of the, the, um, the equilibrium constant for binding to operator by, uh, by uh, by three orders of magnitude, and it turned out that that wasn't enough to uh, to get the repressor to leave the the, the operator, and and so uh, 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 when I first. Uh I told this to Wally Gilbert, he said, well, congratulations, Pete, you've solved a non-problem. But <laughs> after a while, uh, we wrestled with this and decided that it really was important. And b because basically it's the non-specific binding of both the induced repressor and the, uh, and the repressor itself to the other DNA, because that, that binding constant is the same, that essentially sucks the, sucks the, um, the induced repressor off the operator. And that, and that makes, a, makes a big difference. So the, the, the whole thing can be sort of put together in a concept that uh, Otto Berg and I, I showed many years, I mean, published many years ago, in a sort of a window of specificity concept, where, where, where this example of induction, the R and I, R I complex shifts the equilibrium for R binding into the dissociation zone, and we have... Um, uh, uh, and we have this region where, at, at very low uh, 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 salt concentrations, you have nothing. Uh, 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 sorry, at very low protein concentrations, in this case, you have nothing binding at all because it's you're below the equilibrium constant. Then you move into the region where it starts to bind, but it binds specifically, for example, to the to the uh, proper operator. But then if you go still further, it starts binding to other operators and then eventually starting to bind to all the non-specific DNA. And so there's a region in which you, you, uh, you can have specificity, part free, part bound, so you can push things around. And you can push it this way by cooperativity and things like that, push it that way by, uh, by, by, by binding various ligands. Um, and, and so this is a convenient way of, of thinking about this. And a, a nice uh, thing to point out is that, the pro that if you look at the number of protein molecules in the E. coli cell, if you have one protein molecule of a particular sort, then you have about 10 to the minus ninth molar um, protein concentration there. And, if, if you, and so if you work uh, in, in these regions, uh, as you'll see, we, we, we can sort of use this as a way of, of studying the, um, the, 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 uh, the facilitated binding or the, or the diffusion of, of these proteins um, under conditions when, when the reactions are, prote are diffusion limited. Um, the, um, th this is a cartoon of, of looking at, at uh, the, the lac repressor in its, uh, and, and this was the first one that uh, was, was crystallized by, by uh, a group in Holland, and I'll, the, there are citations on the next page. But here's the free lac repressor, here's the non-specifically bound lac repressor, here's the specifically bound lac repressor. You can look at this as, as if it were, an, here's the non-specific binding form where all the charge, all the, sorry, all the uh, acceptor donor interactions are sort of lifted away. When you go over the O binding, uh, the operator, then these clank down and some of the charge, charge interactions, which are indicated by the pluses, move away. And so this, so when you have the binding, you displace this, uh, the, this, the, these uh, counter ions that I mentioned and, and get this entropy of mixing reaction. And this displacement is very easy because you just um, can thermodynamics can uh, KT can push this forward and backward because the barriers are only one or two KTs, and and you have a situation where in the non-specific complex you have the water surfaces are still there, but you've pushed the ions out of the way, 
And then when you get to the specific complexes, the, the water surfaces are essentially uh, pushed out of the way too, and you get that additional interaction. So for non-specific binding, it's almost 100% stabilized by this counter-ion displacement reaction. Specific binding is about 40% stabilized by counter-ion displacement, and the rest by reducing the solvated uh, surfaces in, in specific uh, complex formation or water displacement. And uh, that, uh, that uh, it turns out to be very important in how to think about this. Very briefly, um, the, the, uh, um, uh, Tom Record and uh, his colleagues and, uh, showed that, that you could, uh, that ion condensation, the slope of the ion condensation essentially gives you a slope of the number of, of uh, charge charge interactions that are involved. Here is a bunch of data for pentalysine, which of course has five charges, and if you go to high pH, then you begin to titrate them, so you have less charges, and this all fits together. And, and uh, for, for specifically bound um, uh, uh, lac repressor, you have about uh, eight, char eight charge charge interactions, and for non-specific, you have about 11 or 12. And this comes from uh, the, these, these studies by these people. Here's this, this uh, the, the, the Calodemus, uh, and, and, um, and that was the Captain group in Holland, which did the, it wasn't crystallography, it was NMR, sorry, I should have distinguished this, this non-specific structure. The specific binding is, is, is about eight potassiums are displaced, non-specific binding about 12 are displaced. And uh, you can see that for the specific uh, complexes that you form, all these red, uh, sorry, yellow, um, uh, 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 bases are interacting specifically through these uh, acceptor and donor things through the grooves as, as indicated uh, in the non-specific complex there, there none of them um, are interacted it's all interacting with the ba backbone so there nothing is yellow here so um, uh, Essentially, the, the, uh, you, if you switch back and forth, you can use that cartoon I showed you before to sort of think about what's going on. And if you traverse over the, um, the operator, for example, then you have to clank down all these landing wheels that make the thing hold together and so forth. Um, so here's a, just another picture of this. And uh, condensed uh, the counter ions are displaced from the backbone phosphates, but the solvation layer remains. and then. Uh, then the solvation layer, um, this, is, this is just the non-specific complex, but later the solvation layer is pushed out by the uh, interaction otherwise. Um, so here's, uh, uh, this permits the, th the um, sliding of the, um, uh, of the d DNA binding form on, in a one-dimensional thermally driven random walk. The estimated uh, uh, transition state barriers are low at one to two kilocalories because the charge-charge interactions are long range and non-directional. In contrast, the, the, uh, the, the transition state barrier for three-dimensional dissociation is much higher because you have all these, um, uh, you have to actually depart from the DNA and, and, uh, and put all those, uh, those ions back. Um, so the, uh, uh, it, uh, it was proposed early on and, and recently in, a, in some papers by, uh, by Johann Elf and Otto Berg and others, uh, the, it's the sliding, uh, it really makes sense that the sliding follows the a helical path around the DNA. It, you maintain the, the binding site facing the DNA grooves all the time to optimize recognition. And when the D form of, our, of the, of the uh, binding form of repressor reaches the operator site, it isomerizes into, the, into a form which is sequence specific and so can't slide. <clears throat> the probability of recognition of the operator by repressor on his first pass is clearly not 100%, and Otto and, uh, and Joanne Elf have recently estimated that it may be uh, more like uh, you have to have five or six tries before you actually um, succeed in, in doing this. This is just another picture, way of picturing this. this I, I was trying the other day to draw transition state barriers. Uh, this is the, the, the best PowerPoint. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, so I used it. So this shows very low barriers to moving across particular positions. Of course, you can be in the wrong position when you're in the operator, but one removed, when you get to the central position where, the, where it's properly the, uh, fixed, then of course you get a very high transition state barrier, and we don't know how high this is, but uh, pretty high, and um, then you get beyond it again, it's, it's uh, non-specific. And the things to remember here is by that the proteins and the DNA, because it's a Coulombic interaction, they're weak dependence on distance, insensitive to relative orientations and so on, so it doesn't matter if they're not fitting quite well to the, to the spacings. Whoops. Uh, uh, the, um, 
I'll get, by the end of the talk, I'll get better at this, I suspect. Um, but, but of course, for hydrogen bond donors and acceptors, the interaction strengths and stabilities are much more directional and dependent on interfunctional group distances and relative orientations. And so, um, uh, th th this is the points that I made before about the, about the possibilities of, of sliding and then of, uh, of uh, being stopped. Um, I won't go into this because time is, is running out and I fear the approach of the chairman. Uh, <laughs> and so, so um, but what it shows is that this, this is some very old work with Otto Berg and Bob Winter and others that, that, that for very large biological micromolecules, very, sliding on very high DNA, you, as you, as you increase, um, as you uh, decrease the salt concentration, it slides further and further because the sliding, uh, the one dimensional uh, sliding is, is uh, essentially um, uh, 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 slide uh, the, the length of time it's bound is essentially unchanged from uh, with salt concentration, but the length of the sliding path depends on that. So if you eventually you get to the point where you're searching in the wrong regions, and then this is still a naked DNA, of course, and then you come down again, and you can see that the that the salt concentration dependencies fit all this uh, very well. The, um, there are additional mechanisms of, of, of sorry, slighted, uh, facilitated diffusion, um, which uh, include intersegment transfer, include uh, his sliding, binding, unbinding inside the polymer domain, outside the polymer domain, and uh, interesting features that develop out of that, which I don't have time to dwell on now. Uh, however, of course, the DNA genome is not naked. Facilitated diffusion in in vivo has got to be have a much shorter path because you you um, uh, the G DNA genome is condensed into nucleoid bodies or in eukaryotes it's wrapped around nucleosomes and so forth. And so um, the uh, uh, the lengths of the of the uh, pathways can actually be. Um, uh, be defined in various ways and how much is on there. We did an experiment years and years ago, um, which we, we know, is still sitting on my desk, but it's a, <laughs> it's a very good experiment. We published it in a few reviews and so on, but we were able to show that essentially if you titrate isolated nuclear bodies with lacquer presser, only about 15% of the DNA is free as defined by permitting unimpeded R-dimer R binding to the DNA. In other words, spaces that are big enough to accommodate a repressor without displacing other proteins. And then it gets harder to titrate, and you can sort of uh, monitor that. And that fits pretty well with other and more indirect measurements of, of, uh, of how much free DNA there are in, in chromosomes and nucleated bodies. Um, uh, uh, Elf and, and, uh, and Lee and, and Sunny Chi were able to uh, use, use uh, uh, single molecule techniques to show the, the binding is specifically at, at various particular sites within the uh, nucleoid bodies and then if you uh, induce, they, it, the binding is much fuzzier and you can uh, understand that a little bit from thinking about how the fluorescence is, it becomes fuzzier and then if you put in an anti-inducer, it again recondenses at the proper places, and uh, they, they uh, Otto and uh, and uh, Johan and others made a very nice study, which uh, I'll just which is being summarized here, but but essentially uh, shows how how long the free sliding path is uh, in vivo, and the outcome of that was that um, that the sliding path is about uh, about um, 45 plus or minus. Uh, um, uh, 10 base pairs uh, in vivo f of, uh, within the nuclear body, which means that you can use this as a way of docking the, 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 si the system, but not necessarily as a way of, of searching all over, the, all, over the, all over the system as you can in naked DNA. Um, the, uh, the LAC system is ideal for these kind of studies because there are only three to five molecules per cell. And, and so assuring that the reaction is diffusion controlled and you can have a look at that sort of thing. And you can put, uh, you can put other proteins in the way and so forth um, and, and show that that uh, interferes with, with binding, indicating that sliding into the final target is probably what's going on. Uh, very briefly, RNA polymerase is a different situation because there's much more... Um, much more uh, uh, de de uh, 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 RNAP molecules per cell, uh, with about 6,000 instead of two or three. And so there, uh, generally, there's al already one present in the, at the right point, but they still slide, they can still slide on, on each other. And this is a very nice study by Kabata and, and, and colleagues in 1993, uh, showing that there's a, if, if you work at, at uh, 
at uh, 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 you can see them, them sort of following the flow, but if they hit a, a, a matrix of DNA, they can go across the flow and then they come off again. And so you can sort of show, they showed early on that, that's, uh, that, uh, that RNA polymerase can slide as well. And uh, so there are many other proteins that bind non-specifically and manifest facilitated diffusion. But in the last couple of minutes, uh, and, and the, by the way, this can also be true of, I'm sorry, this, uh, <laughs> I obviously, uh, al as always, maybe when I get older, I'll figure out that I, how many slides I can put into a talk at any given time. But um, at, uh, you, you can, uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, the RNA, um, the, the, uh, for example, in, in DNA replication, there are, the there, there, are there are proteins that are sliding on single-stranded DNA, the, and, and, um, and uh, we're working on issues as, asking questions about that kind of sliding as well. And, but that's all, all um, depends on this ion displacement thing. But in the last couple of minutes, I want to say a few words about uh, a different kind of one-dimensional sliding between the nucleic acid uh, uh, segments, uh, which is also involved in gene expression, and that is when you get inside of the DNA and are in a position to function, whether you're a helicase or an RNA polymerase or something, then, then, it, then you also have elements of, of sliding on one another, and, and also you have what amount to isoenergetic uh, one-dimensional walks, and this can be either a random walk if thermally driven or a processive one-directional walk if driven by hydrolysis. It can serve as a scanning mechanism for nucleic acid complementarity based again on the principle that proper base pair matching is not significantly stabilizing, but mispairing is significantly destabilizing. And, uh, and, when, and uh, in the last couple of slides, I'll use the, the, um, the, what goes on inside of the, of the transcription complex of, of RNA polymerase once it's working to sort of um, show that what happens here. Basically, what you have inside of a transcription complex is a, is a um, single-stranded, uh, 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 sorry, loop, which is um, where, where, the, where the DNA is, is uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get done here in a minute, uh, is, is, is um, uh, 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 oh, held open by the protein and also a, a, a DNA-RNA hybrid which forms inside. And one can, uh, to skip over to the point, one can, uh, uh, you, you can, these things can either be a coupled or a decoupled helicase and these, um, by the protein holding open these structures, the whole bubble can either slide more or less isoenergetically up and down the DNA as, as part of its function, or it can extrude the RNA and, as, as a, and the hybrid as part of its function on the other. So this is zippering by maintaining complementarity. And the thing that makes this possible is that windows of significant size are held open by the protein, and uh, so they, they, they function in that way. Um, so there, there's, there's the, uh, so in, in uh, not having had time to do much justice to this, but there's these two kinds of displacement mechanisms: this counter ion, condensed counter ion displacement mechanism, sliding of complementary nucleic acids on one another, and these may represent keys to looking at various scanning homologies and recombination and various mechanisms that pe other people, of course, are already studying. And these mechanisms have to be coupled and integrated within macromolecular machines. So the last slide just shows a picture of our, of, of our current research group, which is collaboratively with Andy Marcus, who's over here, and, and we, we are trying to do single molecule studies and, and, um, and various kinds of things with, with this group. And I wanted to finish up, because I know Bengt would appreciate it, with a picture of a, a friend uh, that, of, men, of Chalmers as well as mine, of course, and my colleague John Shellman, who was... Um, and I thank him for over 40 years of friendship and scientific discussions, and I know people here at Chalmers feel very much the same way about him. So let me stop with that, and thank you very much, and I'm sorry I went a little over.